Happy Easter, everyone. Welcome to church. As we worship, why don't you stand up? And there are some roses in the front that you can come up and decorate this beautiful cross. So don't hold back, okay? Come decorate the cross as we sing. You did not despise the cross 
For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for the sake you died. Yes, yeah. Good morning. You can have a seat. Welcome to Creevewood Baptist Church. We're so honored that you are here today. It is Easter Sunday, so you know what that means, y'all. You all ready? Yes. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. One more just for fun. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen, y'all. Isn't it good to have a full house today? Yes, awesome. We are so, so appreciative that you are here uh, worshiping the Lord this morning. If you are visiting with us, uh, in the pew rack in front of you, there should be a little card that says, hey, we're glad you're here. Guess what? We are glad that you are here. If you'd do me a favor, fill that out. Then at the end of the service, I'm going to be back in what we call the pastor's corner. Uh, if you would come and bring that to me, I will have a gift for, for you from our church. It's a coffee mug. It's cool. Spare no expense here, you know. Uh, <laughs> but we would, uh, more importantly, I would just love a chance to get to know you, to get to know your family, get to know your story. Uh, and, and as we journey on this life with Christ together, we've had a joyful weekend, had an incredible service here Friday night, uh, remembering the cross, centering ourselves on it. Yesterday, we gave out 2,000 Easter eggs. Um, just, it was fun. A lot of folks from our neighborhood were around, and then today, uh, we are so glad that you are here with us. Uh, y'all, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Spend a few moments in praise and thanksgiving.
joy and thanksgiving are like antidepressants for the soul. God has given us so much. Maybe you here today came in burdened. Uh, Maybe you got some stressors happening in your life. Maybe you don't have much joy in your life right now. Maybe you're struggling uh, with a sin of some kind. And so being here is kind of weird for you today. This is your chance to confess that to God and to bring to God your whole self. As God gave his whole self for us. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I will be reading Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. We're going to sing a couple more songs of of worship responding to what Jesus has done. He is risen. Death is defeated. Sin no longer has a hold on us. Amen. Would you stand and join us? Not a place. 
place your mercy and grace won't find me again cause there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you sing there's nothing Proclaim it this morning. You turn mourning to dancing. You turn beauty from ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn grace into guidance. You turn you are
Couldn't you just have a glass of hot tea and just listen to that? That was awesome. Uh, if you have a Bible, I'll turn, I invite you to turn to the book of John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Um, we are going to walk through some different scenes of the resurrection uh, here today. Uh, I told the group Friday night who was here that the Bible is meant to be uh, read out loud uh, it, it to be heard and so if you want to follow along by reading, that's great. But if you just want to listen to it, even better, all right? Uh, let's go to Lord in prayer, and then we'll, we'll start. Our God, open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to receive a word from you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark. She saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she went running to Simon Peter, to the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said to them, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. At that, Peter and the other disciple went out, heading for the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first. Which I love this. A lot of people think this is John. So John and Peter had a race, and he wanted people to know for all eternity that he won. Okay? I know that y'all are never competitive with your peers, are you? Okay. Stooping down low, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but did not go in. Then following him, Simon Peter also came. He entered the tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there. The wrapping that had been on his head was not lying with the linen cloth, but was folded up in a separate place by itself. The other disciple, who reached the tomb first, just in case you didn't catch that the first time, then also went in, saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to the place where they were staying. All right, we're going to pause right there. Okay, we're just going to pause right there. Okay, so first day of the week, it's Easter Sunday. Uh, the first day of the week, they go out to the tomb and they've been through some stuff, right? Over the last few days, they have watched Jesus come in triumphantly on a donkey. They've watched Jesus teach from the temple. They've watched Jesus wash his disciples' feet. They've watched Jesus pray and pray for the unity of the disciples. But then they watched Jesus get betrayed, arrested. Peter himself denied Jesus three times. They all scattered around. And then they watched their hopes and their dreams dash as Jesus was nailed to a cross. Mary Magdalene comes out early that first day. I guess she was ready to do battle with a Roman soldier or something. I don't know. She comes out ready to anoint Jesus' body. And he's not there. And she's confused. Why isn't he there? Why have they disrespected the dead like this? What have they, haven't they humiliated him enough? Like, what, what are they doing with him? Ever been confused about what God's been doing in your life? Ever wondered, like, God, why, why are you letting this suffering happen? God, why are you letting this tragedy walk through me right now, walk through our lives right now? We don't deserve this. Have you ever wondered that? Here's Mary. They've taken my Lord away, and I, I don't know where they put him. So she goes, and Peter and John have a race. She's confused. She's confused. Last couple years, last few years have been confusing, haven't they, in our culture? 
We've walked through pandemics. We've walked through uh, elections and, and contested elections. We've walked through uh, racial strife in our country. We've walked through so many things. And some people, we were talking about this at our Thursday lunch Bible study, that sometimes it's even confusing where to get the right facts and where to get the right truth from. Anybody ever wonder that? Yes. Guess what you're living in? Right where Mary's at. God, what are you doing here? I'm confused. God, God, how is this possible? What's, what's going on here? I don't know what to do next. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 11. The disciples went back, Simon Peter, and we think John, maybe Lazarus, I don't know, but we think John. But Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. And as she was crying, she stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them. I don't know where they've put him. Let's just pause just for a second before we get to the Jesus part. Let's pause just for a second. This woman is so traumatized. This woman has walked through so much tragedy, she didn't even really recognize angels in front of her. She didn't really recognize what was right there. Have you ever been so, so confused and so, uh, so uh, uh, overwhelmed by emotion that you couldn't really even see what was right in front of you? This is Mary right here. Okay, let's keep reading. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. Woman, Jesus said to her, why are you crying? Who is it that you're seeking? Supposing he was the gardener. She replied, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus told her, since I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. We're going to stop here. We're going to make an observation. Jesus turns tragedy into triumph. Are you with me? Jesus turns tragedy into triumph. I often counsel people, you need to be able to feel what you're going through. You need to be able to feel the suffering that's real. Don't go all the way there. But on Easter Sunday, can we say that Jesus turns tragedy into triumph? Yes. Here's Mary. She's crying her heart out. The one she had placed her hope in. The one that she had placed her trust in. Not only was he dead, now he's gone and she doesn't know where to find him. She hears a voice. Woman, why are you crying? Thinking Jesus was the gardener. (laughs) Take it away, my Lord. Now, in John's gospel... You got to pay attention to the little details, okay? That's interesting detail that she would think that Jesus was the gardener. They, of course, were laid in a, a garden. Now, do y'all remember how John starts off? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. What does that make you think of? You could say creation. It's okay. You could talk to me. I know. Somebody, it's okay. You could talk to me. It makes you think of creation, right? In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. And then in Genesis chapter 2, where was creation started? It was started in a what? So, okay, so John starts off, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was with God. And and now Jesus is laid in a garden, okay? And Mary, who's in this garden, wanting this tomb, thinks that Jesus is the gardener. Can I say something? She's not wrong, Because he's the gardener of new creation. Are you with me? 
He's the gardener of new creation. See, he was there. Mary's life had tur- taken a tragic turn, but he was there to tell Mary, I'm going to take your tragedy and I'm going to make it triumphant. I'm here to give you a new life. I'm here to give you a new creation. God has started this world over, Mary, and it's starting with you right here, right here in this garden. And guess what she does? She runs to the disciples and she preaches the first resurrection sermon ever. I have seen the Lord. Isn't that amazing? I have turned your tragedy into triumph. All right, let's keep reading. This is, this is good stuff, y'all. All right. Verse 19. When it was evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were gathered together with the doors locked because they feared the Jews. Jesus came, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Having said this, he showed them his hands and his side. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Okay, let's just pause right there. Let's just make another observation. So Jesus turns tragedy into triumph. And here's this. Jesus transforms fear into peace. Are y'all with me? Jesus transforms fear into peace. I was at the park the other day with my kids. And uh, it was that day, it was really, it was really windy, it was, uh, like last week, Saturday, something like that. Uh, what, I came from Oklahoma, we called those Tuesdays in Oklahoma, you know, that's just, uh, but it was really windy here, so it was a perfect day uh, for flying a kite. And I was watching these kids fly a kite, there's a, there's a little girl who's probably about six years old or so, and, and she had trouble getting the kite up, but she finally did, there's all this joy in her face, but then the kite went higher, and higher, the bl- they caught another wind gust, and the kite went higher and higher. And all of a sudden, that joy turned into, oh, me! And her dad ran over to her and grabbed the kite from her. And he looked down at her and he said, it's okay, baby. You're okay. It took her a few minutes to calm down after that. But Siri's not here. Um... um I was thinking about that as I was reading the disciples that they had walked in to Jerusalem with so much joy and then things got harder and harder and harder and harder then all of a sudden they're just hanging on like this. And then Jesus comes to them. The resurrected Jesus comes to them. Here they were in a locked room fearing for their lives and Jesus says, peace. Peace. A lot of fear in our world today. Every time I go to the gas station, I fear for my kids' college education, you know. There's a lot of fear in our world. Imagine yourself in that locked room, all your fears in that room and Jesus coming to you, putting his hand on your shoulder and saying, peace to you. Peace to you. Because Jesus turns tragedy into triumph. Jesus transforms fear into peace. We got one more, one more scene for us, okay? Verse 24, Thomas, who's called twin, How would you like that to be your name? Hey, twin. Okay, sorry. One of the 12 was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were telling them, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, if I don't see the mark of nails on his hands, if I don't put my finger into the marks of the nails, and if I put my hand to the side, I will never, ever believe. 
That's, that's the way the Greek phrase is. Never ever. It's a, it's a double negative there. A week later, his disciples were indoors. And again, Thomas was with them this time. And even though the doors were locked, Jesus came, stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Don't be, and my Bible translates it faithless here. It's kind of a hard word to translate. Don't be doubting. Don't be faithless. Don't be uh, unbelieving, but believe. And Thomas responds to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Final observation. Through Jesus' resurrection, through his power, he gives you a rebuilt faith. Thomas here, I don't, I don't want y'all to judge Thomas. He gets known as doubting Thomas a lot, right? He asks good questions. That's what he is. He's a curious person. When he was about to go to Lazarus, the Jesus' disciples were about to go uh, raise Lazarus from the dead. Thomas was the one who spoke up and said, aren't they going to kill you there? Well, okay, we'll all die too. When Jesus talked about, I'm going to go away now, Thomas was the one who said, hey, uh, where are you going? <laughs> it's not necessarily doubting. There's just somebody who has questions, right? And then you put those questions and that curiosity on top of the tragedy that had, he had walked through that week. He wasn't there for whatever reason, whether he was grieving, whether he was, uh, needed to be by himself, whether uh, he had uh, gone to hide with family rather than hide with the disciples. We don't know. All we know is that Thomas wasn't there. And he had a hard time believing. He had believed. But now he's having a harder time with it. We have a word for that today. It's called deconstruction. That's, that's a word that's out there right now. So if you're kind of here, and this is the first time in a while that you've been in a church, and you're kind of rethinking your faith, Thomas is your guy, okay? Thomas is your guy. He's the one who's questioning. And, and notice he isn't judged by Jesus. Jesus just shows up to him and says, here you go. Here are my hands. Here's my feet. Here's my side. And by Jesus' wounds, in that moment, Thomas was healed. And the only response from Thomas, my Lord and my God. Those are our crucifixion scenes in John. And my guess in here is that some of you in here are going to find yourselves in different spots of the story. Maybe you're in here and you're like Mary. And you've walked through a, a, a trauma and a tragedy. And, and it's just overwhelming for you right now. I want you to hear Jesus call your name today. Or maybe you're here, maybe you're here and you're like the disciples and you've got a lot of fears in your life. You're fearing for the future, you're fearing for your family, you're fearing for whatever it is that you are fearing for. Guys, hear the words of Jesus here today. Peace to you. Or maybe you're here, maybe you're here and you're, you're Thomas, you're trying to figure out what is this Jesus? Who is this guy really? You are welcome here for your questions, and this place will love you. But here's my challenge for you. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Let me spend some time in prayer to him. And just see. And just see. See what happens. Because Jesus is alive, y'all. He is risen. 
Y'all got no sleep, I know. You're getting hungry. All right, he is risen. That's right. And because he is risen indeed, because he is risen, he turns tragedy into triumph, transforms fear into peace, and can give you a renewed and rebuilt faith. So will you trust him today? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Here in a few moments, we're going to sing a, a, a hymn of response, a song of response. And, and as we enter into this moment, we're going, to, we're going to respond to the word of the Lord. And some of you all need to respond by receiving Jesus as Lord. And we would invite you to come forward, walk down the aisle, and I'd love to pray with you about that. Others of you, I need to respond with baptism, and we would love to talk with you about that. Still others, man, you're... you're the Holy Spirit's working on your heart right now. You need somebody to pray for you. Nobody's looking around right now. If that's you, if you would just look at me, and I, I would love to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you all. Lord God, in this room, you're working and you're moving. And I know that you can bring your power of your resurrection, the power of your love to each of my brothers and sisters in here who looked at me. I don't know what's happening, but you do. But in this moment, I pray that they will surrender to you and surrender whatever it is to you and it will be a daily occurrence in their life. God, I thank you for this. I thank you that you truly are alive that you truly are risen it's in Christ's name we pray amen however you need to respond I pray that you do so as we stand and sing
Rising sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. That's good news. Yes, Lord. Together, all of our voices together, sing, oh, praise the name, let's sing. Amen. I hope that you have been blessed today. Uh, Please allow me to bless you and we'll be dismissed. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.